Wonderful. Thank you for being here. We want to welcome you to the Infinite Star Connections with your host, the Mass, and me, Vivian Chauvet. And today, we're in for a treat. We are blessed to have the one and only and amazing Mary Rodwell, directly from Australia, who have so graciously has accepted to be here with us. Even though Mary's work needs no introduction, allow us to introduce Mary. Mary is the founder and principal of Australian Close Encounter Resource Network. She was born in the United, United Kingdom and eventually migrated to the Western Australia in 1991. She currently resides in Queensland. Mary is a former nurse, midwife, and healthcare employed as a professional counsellor for the National Health Service UK and Australian Counseling Agency. Silver Chain and Center Care. Now, since 1994, Mary has worked in private practice as a professional counselor, hypnotherapist, metaphysical teacher, researcher, author, Reiki master, and international speaker. The Australian Close Encounter Resource Network primarily role is to offer professional support hypnotherapy and information to individuals and their families with anomalous paranormal experiences, particularly specializing in abduction contact experiences. I can First today, Mary is recognized internationally as one of Australia leading researcher in the UFO and contact phenomenon. She is the author of Awakening, How Extraterrestrial Contact Can Transform Your Life. Also, The New Human Awakening to Our Cosmic Heritage book that came out in 2016. Of course, Mary has features in numerous documentary, one of which that we are both part of, Extraordinary, The Revelations. I mean, the list is so impressive in terms of achievement, book, documentary, research, work. Mary, welcome today to the Infinite Star Connections. It's an absolute pleasure, Vivian and Jeff. And I'm, you know, I've always wanted to support everything that you've, you've been doing because it is also pretty amazing. So thank you. Oh, thank you. What an honor. And I can feel already uh, everybody joining us live. And we have people from everywhere. Uh, who says it's an honor, excited to be there with your special guest. Much love to all of you. So I can tell that people are joining us also in the audience. I know we're going to get questions asked. So it is absolutely amazing to be here with you, Mary, and a pleasure to see you. It's been a while. And you and I, like I mentioned, the documentary we were a part of, and also we were all part of the uh, Galactic Alliance um, both as, you know, ambassador and uh, emissaries. But what I want to know about what my heart is really in, Mary, is your work with, you know, uh, the star children, the star seeds, everything that they talked about, especially right now where we are in this beautiful space of consciousness on the planet. I would like to start here today to set the pace of that energy what can you share about your amazing work with the Star Seed and the Star Children? Thank you. I missed some of that, Vivian. So, have you got a particular question, or would you like me to start? Oh, of course. I was simply said, let's dive, let's begin yeah. today right here talking about your work with the, the Star Seed and the Star Children. I'm looking forward to some of your questions. Of course, perfect. Um, I am. I understand that you've been working with numerous. I mean, level numerous level of case, talking with different background. What commonality did you hear as from the messages? What comes from them? What are they saying about this old transformation that we're going through? I think one of the most amazing things that has happened with what's happened in the last couple of years 
is an explosion of individuals, what I call waking up. And I think that this has been the very positive side of the chaos on this planet at the moment. The fact that with that has come um, a deeper awareness of everyone of not only what matters on this planet, um, they're looking at their mortality, they're looking at their lives and all of this. And this has been, um, an, if you like, a trigger for those to look within themselves and to look at maybe things that they've not given time to, because many that have written to me and emailed me said, you know, I had, I've had strange things happen all my life, but I've never really got to look into them. And now I've, I've had time and I want to find out more about, you know, why I'm being contacted. What's it all about? You know, you know, is that, you know, what is, can you help me connect the dots? And what's happened with that also is they've been activated more multidimensionally. In other words, they're starting to see energy fields or orbs of light or feeling presences. And, and that has also been a trigger to working out, so what does this all mean? So I think we're in a very amazing time, challenging time, but also a very important time in human history. Mary, do you think that uh, when people are starting to get more aware, it is um, how do they get that way? Is it themselves meditating or uh, do you think it's the position of the earth in the galactic? I think we have a little bit of uh, discrepancy of time. It's part, maybe the network is not stable. So just bear with us, everyone. There we go. Welcome back, Mary. I did get the I did get the gist, Jeff, of your question. Mm -hmm. What seems to have been happening that has assisted this activation or this awareness has been some of you know started meditating. Mm -hmm. Um, some have taken the shamanic route to waking up and working out more of their multidimensional selves. Some of them have had near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences, um, as well as, of course, contact um, and having encounters on board with different um, intelligences. So it's actually a combination of all these metaphysical routes have, um, if you like, been the catalyst for no matter whether it's a near-death experience or whether it's it's um, opening up to healing um, metaphysically, it seems to be an activator for them to not only connect to um, angelic beings or spirit guides or uh, you know elementals, but also the myriad of consciousnesses that are um, and intelligences that are contacting this. Ah, she's frozen again. Yeah, the connection is going in and out. So just be patient with us, everyone. Um, we must be doing something good to get that kind of interference for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that we're uncovering something that uh, they didn't want us to uncover. Oh, yes. We have encountered that earlier during an interview a lot. And or origins, for example, interview. whether or not it... I don't know if you got all of that. No, we got about half of it. Right. Okay. So I'm not sure where you got to then in the response. Um, but what I'm saying is that all these different ways into awakening our multidimensional cells, whether it's near-death experiencing, out-of-body experiences or whatever, seems to be a catalyst for opening up to the dimensional connection that we have with many of these different intelligences, no matter how you interpret it as angelic beings, spirit mm -hmm. guides, or, you know, a, um, a, a blue eyed, a blue being with big black eyes, um, you know, or um, energy being or light being. So it's, it opens it up to all of that panorama um, where some do not always realize that, that 
it's all in the same bucket, if you like, of a dimensional in, um, connection that we all have and all have the capacity to have mm -hmm. as well. The one thing that has come to me very clearly is everyone, if they so desire, has the ability to do this. They've just got to want to. Right. They got to want it and they have to send that intention out to get it. Yeah. That is a really good point, especially as more and more people are really getting more in touch with this kind of experience. And we see that more even during my work. I can tell that people are getting more in tune with that aspect of themselves. And then start, see, start awakening more, understand how it impacts their lives, how it really has an impact on their own spiritual awakening process how it really triggers even the understanding on a more mo like you mentioned more multi-dimensionality and i feel like it's a it's a vital part a huge part of the human consciousness returning to that point and it's a big it's a foundation where we're going to be able rising to consciousness on the planet and embrace more dimensions and returning more in that sense so i really resonate with what you just said mary and i can tell you uh even people in chat room says we agree with you we're with you mary uh lots of heart energy thumbs up so absolutely absolutely um and you've been in that in that research um you've been part of the fun you know the urban, uh, research network for a number of years if i remember correctly well, I've since I created a CERN in 1997. I've literally 20. What is that? 25 years ago, or whatever, or almost, and worked with about three and a half thousand individuals, families globally. What I have found is there's such a vast spectrum of those waking up in terms of understanding. So you've got some that are only just coming to terms that this is a reality and can be very fearful still because they don't understand to others that have known all their lives they're connected to other origins don't like being here find it very difficult being on planet earth and saying it's too primitive um what am i doing here i want to go home so you've got this whole spectrum with different needs and looking for different um resources so from some it's helping them through the process of assimilating their greater reality to those that are already working with the greater reality but struggling with third dimensional reality because it doesn't fit with their their experience and for many of them they are denied it due to the educational programming that shuts down mm -hmm. that part of themselves and doesn't accept it and sees it as abnormal so they're living in a reality that doesn't honor their experiences so they feel very isolated and very oh. just hold on everyone it's another so, thing so my work is um come on Mary. hold on it's going in and out. It may be again the energy the hold on. Yeah. Um, there we go. Welcome back, Mary. <laughs> I don't know how much you got of that, but um, let me know. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Do you see a, a greater influx with adults versus children that need to find their way? What I am seeing, Jeff is that the the generations are coming together that even those in their 60s 70s and 80s are starting to come out they've not maybe spoken about this all their lives then all of a sudden there's this urge this need need to, be to heard. need to be heard or i it's like they can't be silent anymore they have to start sharing their story and that's been really
Let's clear this urge and this, Yeah, it's, it's like that's the energy that we're getting now is more and more coming out. And when we talk of disclosure, I honestly believe disclosure is going to come from the ground up. I, I think we'll be waiting forever for governments to tell the truth, um, <laughs> to be honest. So it's going to have to be from the groundswell of more and more people saying, you know, I'm going to talk about this now because I can't keep silent any longer. It's almost like there's an energy that's activating that purpose, their mission, which is to speak about it, no matter the consequences, no matter how it's um, received. There seems with the children, it's it's uh, it's already accepted. They accept that they are part of a greater reality they accept they come from other planets to help this planet they accept they've got a job to do um, they are aware of what that is um, the older generations um, from that are also now becoming more aware it's almost like they have access to more of their soul um, uh, what can I say that their, their soul journey and that this is what they need to do and many are saying I want to know what my mission is. I want to know, um, you know, if I'm, you know, doing everything that I need to do because there's a, an almost an anxiety and an urgency mm. that they're feeling that they have to do something. They have to be on their their mission now and what have you. And that has come out really clearly. Um, whereas, you know, a few years ago, I might get half a dozen in a week. I'm getting half a dozen in a day contacting me now. So that is the shift. That is what the exponential increase in people owning their experience. The interesting thing is the reason some have been hesitant is because of their belief systems. It might be religious beliefs. It might be scientific beliefs. You know, they may be um, very high profile, for example, in their particular field, which makes it very difficult for them to own this. But it, it could be a combination of all of that saying, if I do this, what are the consequences? But then there's the point where, when do I speak my truth? So there's that, that huge conflict, but it, it's like they need to do it now. It's like that's the energy that's coming through is this is the time and it's important. Okay, now when, yeah, because when, when I interview these people and I ask them, the older people, have you seen a craft yet? Yeah, and then the next thing you know, their their eyes get big, and then they, they talk about it, and they're excited. But when I ask the younger generation, like I would say, like maybe from the twenties uh, to earlier, it's like, oh yeah, I see them. Yeah, there's no big thing, you know. It's already it's already commonplace for them, you know. So they have a story, but it's not that interesting because they expect everybody else to to get it, you know. Right, but how do we how do we bridge the gap between the generations for those who are still awakening to their to that nature that profound themselves this new reality? How do we bridge the gap? Um, maybe some advice or you know guidance for people who are still having a challenging time to find their voice in all of this. I don't think there is hearing me right yeah, now. I so. think she's still uh, still packing it. Yes, yes. And we do have also a few questions from the audience we can ask Mary Perfect. as soon as the, as soon as, um, the connection comes back. Um, With that is what then? I wonder what we can do to boost the, uh, the connection tonight. Let me see if I can do anything. <laughs> It's probably illegal, but you never know. We'll give it a shot. The frequency's up. <laughs> Let me see what I can do to help out oh, here. I think she's coming back from another. So I'm going to remove her. There you go. Come she's back. Gone. Let me uh, make she's some adjustments. Back. Let's see here. I'm going to remove her. And then there you go. There we are. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. This is a challenge. And I will keep going. Jeff, with your question about the young people, yes. you mentioned about them. What I'd say is with the young people, it is um, almost natural for them to accept 
that this is all part of the you know the the their reality here what i find they struggle with is two things finding others they can talk to they still feel very alone um, and maybe struggling with their family's dis disbelief or uh, denial of their experience. And some of them have been really in a, um, a difficult challenge through it because if their parent is very strict in their religious beliefs, for example, as one young man told me, his parents were very strict Christians, that he couldn't tell them he knew he was a star seed because it would devastate them but it was devastating to him to not own his mm -hmm. truth. And he was quite suicidal because he, he, he didn't want to upset his parents um, because he loved them dearly. So there's this, this awful kind of conflict that's going on between what you know and, and feel and sense is your truth, but you have family that you love that you don't want to upset um, a, in the in the process of that. and that's not just the young men i've met very many um that are married and in relationships where they're having experiences they may be uh, very aware that their partner and maybe the children are but the partner's in total denial doesn't want to hear it so that they can't say well look i know this is happening and it's important because i want to understand my experience but they're in total denial the, the the partner is whether it's a husband or a wife and they can't own their truth and this is causing so much um heartache in many families because they can't follow through and they're even reluctant to even talk to me because they feel their partner may be very upset that they've actually talked to me so you've got a lot of this family dynamics and extended family dynamics with you know, relatives that may also um, give them that kind of response. So it's not just dealing with how do I understand my reality and my contact with these intelligences, but how do I, I operate in a, a, my world my, with individuals around me that are in total denial or fearful or don't, you just don't wanna know about my other world, my mm -hmm. other, Experience, you know, when you might have had a really profound experience, given symbols, taken up on spacecraft, been shown extraordinary things, as many are, in terms of their cosmic heritage, for example, or science downloads or um, frequencies and what have you. And they can't mention any of it to their family because their family think that, that there's something wrong with them or they're going to go crazy or they're too scared to hear them. So you've got all these other things that are going on around contact that most people don't realize is very real. And it's a very much a human issue because we have not yet true. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, very true. Very true. Well, let's give it a moment for Mary to come back. The connection was going so well for a moment. So let's see. I mean, is it because of this with more? secrecy, this truth and here we go. I hope you heard that okay. Yes, perfect. It was just a little bit of a laugh, but I, I see what you mean because of the secrecy and other factors. So in your experience, how how can they how can people facing such a dilemma of pushing or denying an aspect of themselves? and being able to embrace these beautiful experiences. Um, based on your experience, Mary, what, what would be some ways to be able to bridge the gap in between? Well, one of them is to be informed so that they can do their own research, so that they can get validation through, you know, what they're hearing. Um, there's so many resources in terms of information. That helps to validate it despite the fact that it's denied elsewhere. Talking to someone who hears them, if they can, and I do connect people that have no one to talk to. Um, that's one of the things that's part of my resource is do I know someone that they can connect with so that they can share at least with someone, which I think is important as well. And the other thing is to empower them to 
make more of their connection. In other words, okay, so you can't talk about it to those around you, but you can talk to them. You can you can ask them and, and ask them to help you with that isolation um, or because of what's happening around you. And and as time goes on, I think that that will shift the energy around around those around you, because I think energetically you change. You don't become so desperate to be heard by them because you've got now a communication with your star family and they can support you even if others around you don't understand. I mean, it's like Vivian, you tuning into your, your, your um, what I call your non-human family um, and you can be doing that without anyone knowing that you're doing that. It doesn't have to be consciously out there i'm just having a chat to the team um it just can come in and you can you can get what you need and you don't necessarily then rely on others to give you that validation so that you can feel more whole that, that is a very valid point i love the way you said mary it's the validation comes from you first is to recognize that you do have this connection this is part of who you are and often time people ask me what is the best way for me to connect to my star families so with your amazing background and experience what would be some guiding points for people or uh, to what would be more effective way for them to connect to their star groups it's a good question. And more and more, many of my clients ask about that. They want to have a better, what I call operating system to give them confidence. I call it that, you know, it's like, I'm saying to them, well, you're, you're riding the bike, but you, you know, if you want to get good at it, you need to know where the brakes and the lights are so that you can get more confident. So what I say, find out is if there's, sensing energies, seeing balls of light, they're getting downloads, they're almost there in terms of it, but they haven't yet got the confidence because they need to know who it is they're working with. They need to start asking, well, who are you? Why are you with me? What's your connection to me? Um, and how are you helping me? Who else is in the team? So I usually say to many intuitives that come, they get downloads, they may get really accurate information. And I will say to them, well, who is it you're working with? And they'll say, I don't know, but it, it's always accurate. And, it's, and I'm saying, but you're talking to your best friend behind a wooden door. Don't you think it's time you open the door and mm -hmm. find out who they are? They're going, that sounds like, and I says, and you can ask questions then, can't you? You're not just a conduit for their information. You can say, now tell me about this. I want to understand this. I don't understand that. I said, so you can have real conversations then. And you are going to be on an equal footing rather than um, just waiting for new information to come when they give it. Yes, very, very true. We can ask questions. Let's give it a moment. Mary will be very right back. Let's just hold sacred space. I know she'll be back in a moment. We're holding energies here. Yeah, actually decrease the amount of threads and decrease the processes. So we should have a better connection. Okay. <clears throat> to you, well, but with... Oh. <laughs> be better, I know that I'm telling you, we have this much challenge on the technologies because we're doing something phenomenal. A lot of frequency. There's a lot of um, uh, opposition of energies today. Okay, okay, Mary's coming back. Let me bring her back. There you go. Welcome back, Mary. Thank you. This is this is an interesting one, isn't it? It's an interesting <laughs> one. Um, <laughs> oh, look, look. I'm I'm trusting the important stuff gets through. Um, so I work with the process which helps the individual to understand how to work with their clairvoyance, their clairaudience, their clairsentience. So we actually call in the team and they learn the energetic signature of their life guide or gatekeeper, whoever that is. They learn also what form 
they, they will look like. Because I said, if you've got a photograph in your mind's eye, it helps you connect more. If you know their energetic signature, it helps you connect more. And then I say, right, now we're going to find out who they are, why they're with you, how many lifetimes. You know, um, is there, a, is there a frequency or a name that you can address them? What, what is it they give you in terms of support? So once you've got the visual, you get the, you know, the clear audience working, then you, you can then start to expand on, let's look at some of these questions that you've got. Let's find out now what your life guide is telling you or your gatekeeper is telling you so that they get to know really, Vivian, how easy it is. Well, you, well also, you know, you also got to be careful too, that be careful what you wish for, because these people, you know, I, I always tell everybody almost every single time, you fall in love with it. It's a beautiful experience, but they are relentless. They will, once that door is open, you know, it's a, it's a two way thing. You just can't turn it off because they'll, they'll always will be there. What I say to those that I assist with this is that you are in charge it's your, just like you are when you have friends come around for a cup of tea. You decide when they come and you decide um, when to have a dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. So this is really important that you are, you know, in charge of that. I said, but the, the, the most important thing is that what you're getting is empowering, it's guiding, it's loving, it's compassionate and right. has a high frequency. And that's how you know that it's coming from a high source. And I said, and it's your intent that you make sure that you will accept. Yes, high frequency, very important. Mary will be right back. We're just holding sacred space. So much frequencies tonight. This is amazing. High oh, frequency. You know, love frequency. Oh, there we are. We're back again. Yes. My <laughs> frequency, back. Mary, that's so right on. Thank you for that. It is so true. And your intention to see also is not from a place of fear or I don't know, but a place of understanding the connection you already have between you and your star family or your star group. It can be different groups. Mm -hmm. And so to understand that you are part of them as you are part of you. And that redefine how you're able to stay uh, in the same energetic field or that signature you talked about. So this way, you know, there's an alignment there and you maintain that vibrational alignment. Would you say that that's also important as part of the process? I think it's vital that once you understand that it's all about your intent and coming from a pure intent is what, is that like a radio frequency that's the frequency you're putting out that's then what you will actually draw to you what i say to people is you have got to be more grounded not less when you work oh yes yeah and there's a difference between intention and interests interesting indeed dimensional and 3d work in high frozen it's her buffer she's right here everybody don't 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 go anywhere there we go There you go. Here we go. Welcome back, Mary. Welcome back. It's it's a bit like sound bites, isn't it? We're, we're doing at the moment. <laughs> That's because we're doing something really wonderful and high frequency. What's going on right now? There's a lot of other. Um, there's a lot of different intention going on right now. This weekend is really a very complex weekend energetically. 
So we're constantly contemplating. We have a question for you in the audience. Is that okay if I read it, Mary? There's a question for you coming from Raya. Can I read a question to you? Yeah, please. Raya is asking, do you know if all children are star seeds now? I don't know consciously whether they all are. My sense is that we're nearing that. My feeling and my sense is that we're pretty close to that from what I'm getting. But it's hard to know, isn't it? Because um, of there is so much going on on the planet right now. But I feel like there's been an influx. In fact, a big influx in the last 20 to 30 years. I, I see that the influx of star children coming back and you can see them. They're much more identifiable. I have come across three distinct stars star see star children when we were at the international ufo congress about a week ago here in arizona and i saw them and i even went to talk to the mother and invite them to come back to our our vendor booth so they can sit in our seven feet tall copper nubian pyramid and allowing the children to communicate and be in that energy the eldest was about five or six and she sat down in the pyramid palms up chin up and she already knew what to do with the energy it was phenomenal to watch i find this what is so beautiful about what's happening on the planet right now is that these wonderful um stars star seeds that have come in from all over the cosmos interdimensionally as well to assist with their special um, awareness to assist this planet and I still recall a 10 year old explaining that it, it, this was his first earth life that he was um, a blue being that had come from a planet where he, he said that he'd brought with him the understanding of being a center seed which meant that he connects to the center of the planet and he will assist with what's happening with all the pollution on this planet, that that's part of his mandate to assist with that. Some have come in as ecological warriors, um, working with, um, and also elementals, as one seven-year-old explained that he worked with the, the wind as one of the elementals. So we've got children that have extraordinary awareness of their multidimensional reality, their connection to, multiple, um, often multiple origins. One beautiful little girl of nine explained to me that she was a hybrid and she explained that she was part water being and part human. And she drew a picture of herself as a water being. And she said, so I, I'm a bit of both, but she says, what I do with music, she said, is I not only hear it. Oh, the good part. I know. She'll be back. Just let's hold the space. We have to be patient. I love aquatic beings. I've encountered them in the past. They're very old. Yeah, they're very ancient indeed. And there's such an, a wisdom about them. I know she'll be back, everybody. I know that oh, yeah. Just... yeah, the frequencies are just more like, let's just say challenging tonight. Um, so let's just... All but I can, what is going on for the person who... Here we go again. Okay. The punchline. We needed the punchline. <laughs> ah, um, the little girl. Did you get about the little girl who uh, taps into music frequencies? Yes. yes. What she said was that she can not only feel the music, but she can go on the frequency to the person who created it and what is actually going on with them. So she can go to the source of that frequency as well. So in other words, it is really multidimensional in terms of everything that we see as three-dimensional. They are seeing from uh, like like synesthesia, we know we hear about synesthesia that someone can see a number but see a color with it or see a shape with it mm -hmm. or feel it. 
Well, this seems to be with everything that these children can literally understand from all the different frequencies, both visually, sensing, feeling, knowing, it all comes into a package, which they, you know, like, like um, programs or like packages that they can unpack. And this is why they struggle with 3D um, education, because they're not being, it's not understood how they are perceiving reality. And so they're seen as dysfunctional because they're wired differently. They don't just see one thing. They may feel it, they may sense it, they may know the origin of it. So they're taking in huge amounts of information, which in our 3D is, oh, that's a table, that's a chair, that's just a bit of music, or that's a color. No, for them, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a sense, it's, a, um, it's felt, it's, it's um, absorbed into a whole new, understanding of what that is and we we you know the rest of us are blind to that at this time not that we always will be because i believe as our dormant dna is activated we're becoming multi-dimensional in, um, in that in terms of being able to see and sense more of the hologram that we're being exposed to slowly but surely but the children are already there and that's why they're seen as dysfunctional because they can't cope with it they can't cope with the impact um, the input that they're getting in many cases. And so they shut down. Yeah, because it's incomplete. It's like tetravalent logic. We got to learn that. Yeah. yeah. That's the next evolutionary step, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. But I believe the downloads that many have that they say they can't unpack yet. Mm -hmm. And it may be symbols, it may be scripts, it may be the light languages or whatever. My feeling is that that's being put there into their consciousness for the time when they can decode it. Yes, right. right. So it's almost like the software has been put for the upgraded human computer aspect. So right. when and we then, And then one day you'll get this aha moment, like, yes. ah, I get it. That's it. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening with a lot. Because some will say to me, well, I don't understand what I've been given. I can't translate it or whatever I'm saying because it's not time yet. Right. It's all about timing. 100% agree. Very true, very true. My my own intergalactic group always says, in order for your work to happen, it has to be in a very sequential way, because the vibrational shift on the planet must happen in order to support that kind of decoding or like language or the next upgrades. And I would say, even from a DNA perspective, I know you been part of the latest DNA research in that sense, uh, when you talk about returning to a more multidimensional aspect. Um, we have multiple questions for you going on, and I can barely keep up with the chat room. Yeah, it's incredible, I, I the energy. Um, <laughs> if I would say, uh, Lauren, Lauren is asking, Mary, do you have a clearing meditation that you find beneficial to the awakening and the remembering process? Very interesting question. Um, many years ago, I was given a short visualization where you're talking. to the as you do that okay okay are we back yes, yes. welcome back okay. yes. Right. they don't want me to say this so i'll say it um it's a, a short one that i was given many years ago now and and what it's doing is talking to the super conscious higher self and when i take the person into the into a, an altered state I literally take them to a place where I'm talking to the superconscious to release any programs, any limits, any blocks, any implants from this lifetime or any other that are limiting them from being all that they now choose to be from this moment on. And then.
Let's hold sacred space. Mary will be back. A lot of frequencies going it's on. It's actually dealing with letting. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I don't know how much of that you got. Okay, okay. So once I take them through this process, and it's not a long one, I then am shown in my little screen here the different frequencies to take them through to realign their energy systems. So it might start with yellow or blue or, or whatever, and take them through the frequencies to align their energy systems. I ground them and bring them out of it. And then we call in the team because they're in a different frequency then. They are absolutely clear because I we've we've got consent from the superconscious to do what is needed. And the superconscious will do so. And as they come out of the frequency, we say, right, now we're going to call in the team. First of all, we call in your life, gatekeeper, whatever. I get them to feel the energetic signature, like the handshake, and saying, okay, so this is the handshake or the energetic signature of your guide. We want to know what they look like. And I'll lead them through the, the um, process of seeing their guide and then communicating. So once you've cleared the decks, as I call it, what you're really doing is saying, I'm now ready to move forward to the superconscious self. I am now ready. I'm clear. And I want to have the best connection possible with my, my, my star family. And it's really, it's a very simple process. It's very easy. And anyone can do that. They can go into a meditative state, put out the intent to be clear of everything that is limiting them. So they can be all that they now choose to be. And from that, then they can do that process. They can do it themselves. It's just sometimes it, they gain confidence by being with someone who facilitate, facilitates this. I even get them to work out how tall the being can be tall. Stand up and you're going to ask your, ask your guide to show you how tall they are. And they're going to have to just let their hand rise and rise and rise. I said, and your guide is going to stop you at their height. And they can't think that. It's taking them out of left brain, which is the important thing, so that they have to trust what they're getting. And they'll say, oh, they're really tall. I'm saying, how interesting is that? <laughs> and um, it's, it's, and it's, it's not always, you know, the Tibetan monk or the, um, the North American Indian. It may be a blue guy with big black eyes. Or it might be a mantis being, or it might be a feline being. It could be one, and that surprises many, that they don't necessarily get what they thought they should get as their guide or whatever. And it's just showing them the difference between left brain and right brain. With left brain, you think before you speak. Right brain, you speak before you think. And once you've got that, it's, it's easy. It's, you know that. You know that, Vivian, how easy it is. It's natural. I said somebody didn't teach you how to breathe, did they? So why should you think that you need other than to be reminded of how it works is all that you need because everyone can do this. They've just got to walk. Yes, we can. Everyone can. Absolutely. And you have I feel like you have to also trust yourself, trust the process. Uh, be present. Can it be a same similar uh, meditation process to connect also to their higher self? Yes, absolutely. Again, it's just about trusting what you are sensing, feeling, knowing. Most unfortunately have gone through a, a system that's told them not to trust that sense they have or that feeling or that knowing because there's no logic to it. Well, it's because it isn't logical that makes it valid because it's not part of your 3D reality. It's part of your multidimensional reality. And all of that is information. If you sense something, if you feel something, if you know something, it's, it's multidimensional connections that are giving you information about you in the same way that people say, well, how about my past lives? And I'll say, okay, let me tell you, when you have a thought about,
All right, everybody, we're holding a space. Mary will be right, right back. Um, <laughs> the energy is quite Come. interesting. We won't be. Uh, we're back again. Okay. Yeah, you're back again. Perfect, Mary. For a few minutes. Okay, so I said one of the ways you can tell about your past lives and where you were perhaps on this planet is to what countries do you feel drawn to? And they it may be India or it could be Russia or whatever. I said, well, what makes you be drawn to something like Russia rather than France or Spain or whatever? I said, it's because there's a connection there. That's why you're drawn to it. So listen to it. It's all information. And it's, it's available to us if we're prepared to honor it. Um, and that's the big thing is we're, we're so programmed out of that part of our awareness that it's very hard to have confidence in it. But the more that you work with it, the greater it will expand and give you more and more detail and information. And it's like anything, you know, you just haven't used those skills for a long time and you have to remind yourself of them. I love that. I like the way you said it. it's just some skill set we haven't used in a long time. I call it exercising your multidimensional sensory and your intuition and your other centers that become more active. In reality, we are returning to that natural state. Uh, it's something that is very natural, encoded, embedded in who we are. But humanity has been programmed for generations to believe that there is nothing else but the world here and anything that looks different than you, you have to fear it. And that's mm. a big reversal of thought system uh, about that. Mary, mm. let me ask you this. There's also a few questions regarding the same topic. Um, through your work, has anyone or even yourself or your research, um, there's, a lot of, of, there's a lot of talk about twin flame. And there's a lot of energy put out there, a theory about that. What what do you know about twin flame or people encountered a twin flame? Were you able to hear my question, Mary? No, I didn't hear it. Mary. It's okay. I'm happy to rephrase. I know we have some interesting frequency going on. People are asking about twin flame. So for one thing, what is what is a twin flame? And many people said they have encountered or met their twin flame. Um, is that something that has come up to your work and research? Only in a limited way. My understanding, if I trust my source, is it means it's like they showed me that that's like the, the oversoul and aspects of us operate in many different realities and dimensions, et cetera, et cetera, as we use aspects of our soul. And so a twin flame is when you get two aspects of the same soul incarnating in the same reality. That's how I understand it. I don't know if that's correct, but that's the one that I have been given. Because um, what's interesting with my regressions sometimes is someone will go and see themselves in a parallel universe in a different reality, for example or a different timeline. And I thought, well, how, how can that be when they're also operating here? It's because there's aspects, we're not using our full um, capacity as a soul in the way that I understand it. That um, So sometimes, All right, let's hold this space, everyone. Mary will be right back. Uh, they um, feel they've had a... Okay, I was. I think I was getting to where somebody feels that they've had a soul swap um, through a near-death experience or whatever, that sometimes it isn't actually always a different soul. It's just the same soul, but drawing in more, more of their higher self to deal with whatever the issue is. So they feel different. They feel empowered. They're not so unsettled by what happened um, earlier in their life. So sometimes that can be what's going on, not necessarily a new soul coming in. Beautiful. Thank you so much for Mary. Um, many people share their experience, whether that the first time they meet someone, whether it's through an online exchange or phone conversation, and they don't physically are together. 
But then the energy when they meet, it's phenomenal. They're kind of in search of energy connections. Um, and then they say, well, this is my twin flame. So uh, based on your experience and your understanding, are there certain points that people need to know to see, to recognize if there is a twin flame situation or it might be a very compatible soul mate uh, energy code, for example? Well, if they're connected to their source, all they need to do is ask, can you explain to me why I feel this way about this other person? Because it may be they're part of the soul group, the soul family, the monad. So it could be that's the connection or it could very well be an aspect. So what I would be doing if it was me is I'd be saying to my team or my life guide, how do I interpret this? Um, and also really importantly, is there a resonance to that answer? Because we really need to trust also our resonance to any information that comes through because that's really important on this planet right now when we're given so many complex different bits of information and what have you, what's truth, what's not truth. The only thing we've ultimately got is our own resonance to our truth. And we are being tasked, I believe, to trust that because it is the only way that we can actually start to work out what's actually going on because there's nobody out there that's going to have the absolute because we're all coming in with different perspectives, different um, understanding and awareness. The only real, um, if you like, the most integrity that you're ever going to get is yourself, <laughs> is you. It's up to you. So you've got to take responsibility <laughs> for it. You can't give it away and say, well, it's his fault. Or her. Yes, pure wisdom. That's true. Yeah, and that's where the ring of truth comes from. Yes, yes. That's all the space. Mary will be right back. Uh, oh, quite interesting because... You will get oh, back again. That's all good. Yes. Uh, um, I, I, you know, what I say to people is this: you know, when you have friends round, they may all have different advice. So, in the end, you're being tasked to listen to that advice and see if it resonates with you. It's no different to your star family. Does it feel right? Does it does it make sense to you? Does it resonate? And sometimes you may get a buzz that comes down and whoo, you know for sure, or you look at the clock and it goes 11 11, or you, you, know, or you look at the clock and it suddenly says, mm, Okay, I've got it. So you'll get a confirmation, is what I'm saying, that what you're getting is accurate and is on, on, uh, on the spot. Beautiful. Thank you so much for this, because I know I know there is so much information right now. And I would say whether in the UFO community, the spiritual community, there's so much information, whether it's galactic history, uh, the Middle East, the Confederation of Light, the different groups of beings. And I can tell I see that a lot in my work as well, where it creates a lot of confusion. People sometimes will take some semantics or concepts mm. and they get that all confused with other things because there's too much to process. So I love the fact, Mary, that you mentioned about staying in your own resonance field. Listen to your resonance. Feel it to yourself. Ask what really belongs to me. What is it that I may need to integrate? Am I getting too much information? And then that oversaturates your mental field. So yeah. you have to be very much in alignment with yourself. So that mm -hmm. resonates a lot, Mary. So thank you for that. You're yeah, welcome. Absolutely. We have a beautiful question from Gabriela, and I would like to read it to you. So Gabriela is asking, is there any way we can find out more about the Lemurian, the Lemurian times and how we can access memories about the healing and the wisdom shared by, uh, you know, the star mothers, the Lemurian energies or the Lemurian times? I think there are a number of people that have past life recall of being in Lemuria. Um, I don't 
personally have any connection as far as I know. I have with Atlantis, but not with a Lemuria. What I would do again is like you put out to the consciousness, I would like to have more understanding about Lemuria. And you'll be amazed what comes to you when you put out that, that thought, that energetic thought. Um, I often say to people, you know, it's like when we're pregnant, it seems that everywhere we go, everybody else is pregnant. You are on the frequency of pregnancy. I keep this really simple to explain to people that all the time we're putting out information or questions and the way that we get the answers is often through the, the, the response to that because one of the things about our DNA that some may know and some may not is that they are in fact operating like miniature wormholes into the, um, if you like, the hologram. And as we put out this frequency, I want to know about this, you'll be amazed at what comes through. You pick up a book or somebody starts chatting to you or even asking who does have memories of Memorial. All I do know is that there was a young man, Bariska, a Russian child, he's no longer a child now, that talked about visiting Lemuria from Mars. And I think he talked about the the, um, the beings being nine meters tall or what have you. And he visited Lemuria quite a bit. What I do know about Lemuria is that it went the spiritual route to higher consciousness rather than the technology um, with Atlantis, which it ultimately left Atlantis devastated and what have you. Um, so that was that, and I feel almost like there's a there's a parallel at the moment with Earth at the moment. I did a regression with a wonderful lady who um, has incarnated this time with a friends of hers. And she was given a message. Okay. Um, this lady went back to the time of Atlantis where she said we didn't quite achieve what we were meant to as light workers. And we've come back again now as a group to, to actually follow the mission. And it was again a parallel against technology to higher spiritual awareness where we're being, um, if you like, enticed into using technology rather than our own consciousness to reach that other level of higher awareness and multidimensionality. There's the challenge. There's the challenge that's going on at the moment. Do you want that? Do you want technology? Or do you realize that you have the technology encoded in you? And it's just a matter of you wanting to access it and use it. Oh, I, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. And that's part of our the message, to my even to my Octarian. Uh, delegation, the work that we do, we always remind people, yes, machines, program, frequency that measure your plugging to a computer, maybe it's just stepping stone, but ultimately it's to rediscover all that is already embedded in you. You generate very powerful frequencies. Your body is designed this way. You're coming back into that place of understanding you as really powerful beings and i love that this is a challenge the parallel of those two historical timeline on earth with lemuria and atlantis and to understand look what happened then we are repeating again today and throughout many generations i mean we know throughout history that the earth went through a very powerful conjunction where governments or other form of authority was given a choice you go to technology or you follow the spiritual guidance of more enlightened groups and look where we are today. So we're finally getting the chance to return to this wisdom of what Lemuria is reminding us of. And I love what you said. I resonate deeply with this. Very much so. On a personal curiosity level, with all the people you work with or from all generations, whether it's children or adults, are they some core star groups or coming more to the regressions or the connections? Or is it very various or it diversified depending on who you work with? 
So let's hold the space. I don't know if Mary heard my question. Let's hold the space, everyone, for a moment. <coughs> All right. Can you hear us, Mary? Yes, I just didn't get the question. Of course. I'm happy to repeat. No worries. From a curiosity perspective, through your work, do you see that there's more specific star groups are coming back more, or is it very diversified, depending on who you work with? I haven't really looked at the patterns um, of the different origins. A lot come up with um, the Pleiadians. That seems to be a particularly popular <laughs> origin. Um, some from Orion and Sirius, not so, not quite so much. Um, Arcturian comes up a great deal. Andromeda comes up. But there are some that say, I'm not from this universe. I come from another dimension or whatever as well. Um, and we'll come up with unusual planets and what have you as well. I mean, I always recall this lovely 10-year-old explaining that he came through a portal in the sun, that he was from another dimension. And a young man that I wrote about in The New Human was an artist. And he had an interesting story in the sense that he was um he kept getting dreams as a child about war and about um soldiers uh, which he realized was the first world war and he didn't know why until he realized that that was him and that he hadn't achieved his purpose because he went to war and he was an artist and he was to create uh, artwork that um, acted as a perceptual trigger a cat all right let's hold space mary would be right back so he's come back this time okay i don't know how much you got of that he's been coming back this time yeah, because now he can, because he he failed in his mission, because he went to the war and was killed, that he's come back to create this artwork that acts as a trigger to wake people up to a greater reality. So when you see it, it activates something in you. And a lot of the art, I believe, that's being created and downloaded is doing exactly that. It's one of the many ways they're activating uh, us into more awareness, along with the star languages along with the symbols and, and the frequencies that are coming with them and the scripts and all the unusual writing that's coming and even seeing some of the beings um, that are being drawn now are activators because it's showing us on another level the variety of, of the, and the multitudes of consciousness on, in, on this planet and you know, in this universe, in this cosmos and what have you, which is stunning because there are so many, so many varieties. And and for me now, nothing surprises me. The different forms, you know, that, that are coming through is quite stunning. And, and what I love about it is that many of them feel very connected to those. Yes, very connected indeed. Let's hold a space, everyone. Mary will be right back. Let's tease all their cats. We're back again. Yes, you're back, Mary. You're back. <laughs> With... I want to give you so much credit and thank you for your so patient. You you go back, you continue, and I know that all these technological um, interesting variation fluctuation today. But we're we're talking about something absolutely incredible here. So we're we're with you hundred percent. Just so you know, we're with you. <laughs> Jeff, do you have a, a question or something you want to explore with Mary today? Yeah, um, you know, you've done some work um, before with the uh, Dylan family. Can you, because uh, they, they got me intrigued here. And it was interesting because it's all these children and the family, right? 
Can you uh, can you talk about that just a little bit? I didn't get you there, Jeff. Uh, just about the uh, about the Dylan family. Oh yes, yes. Um, what was fascinating initially was the mother, Elsa Dillon, um, having extraordinary experiences and um, mentioning that the whole family, there's eight children, were all having contact, right from the nine-year-old girl right through to the 17-year-old older sister, Gigi. And what's well, Gigi alone, she now has drawn about 260 different images of the beings that she connects to um, and has an understanding of them as well. It isn't just that's the picture. She has an understanding of who they are, um, their personalities, their characters. But every single daughter has had experiences where they're drawing the beings right from the nine-year-old right through. What's fascinating is some of their contact is slightly different. One of them is very electrical. She said everything she touches affects the electrics and what have you um, and she has an, an understanding of not only do they bring in the beings and communicate with them that they talk to the plants they talk to the animals you know that, that they can pick up a, um, a crystal and have an instant understanding of of the energy of the crystal for example so it's multi-dimensional in in that sense as well um, talking about what they experience on the craft, the, they're bringing symbols in and what have you. So if anything is compelling is when you've got every single member of the family having this awareness. And that in itself is is telling you something. And, um, uh, and this happened to everybody at the same time? No. Well, it's all different for each one um, mm -hmm. in the sense that, yes, they're all doing it now. They're all doing the artwork. They're, they go out and they'll go to a stream and they'll connect to the plants or they'll connect to the, you know, the, the um, not only the water beings or the mammals and what have you, they will connect to everything around them. It's, it's like everything is in some way sentient to them mm -hmm. and they can connect to it. I always remember a six-year-old explaining to his mum when he was holding a meteorite, saying the meteorite talked to him and telling him where it came from, why it was there, why people were afraid of it. And, and she said to him, um, how does this, this meteorite talk to you? He said, it talks to me in my head, was how he explained it mm. as a six-year-old. You know? And what we know is there are many that hold crystals and will actually have a dialogue with them, particularly such as the crystal skulls, for example. You can get information from them. And I talked to a lovely young lady, Lee Capitelli, who um, I talked about a number of times in Melbourne. And she told me she was in, in Atlantis and she used to download her research into her own crystal skull. It acted like a hard drive. So she said all her research would go into the crystal skull. And she said, I hope it's around somewhere. She says, I don't know whether it is. I hope so. So what we're what I'm learning is that there is a facility, uh, a, a frequency that allows us. And there we'll be right back. Let's stay focused. There's a lot of energy in my room. Or whatever when in fact it has a are we back again yeah we're talking about the crystal skulls the download of info yeah what it's saying um one of the interesting videos i saw was from a lovely uh, uh scientist in england where he was filming with his technology crystals with the crystal healer and you saw this light coming out the crystal and being present while the healer was actually working with healing and actually seeing it go back again. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just trying to think of his name now. It's gone right out of my head. When I think of it, I'll, I'll tell you again. But he, he films with his PIP technology. He's also, um, if you like, recorded the frequencies.
we're only beginning to understand how every, you know, we're only just beginning to understand. Um, and I've had experiences myself where I've connected to something like a crystal or whatever, particularly the crystal skulls and got information. And it's just there. It, there's been, there's no shift in consciousness with me. I will just be there and connect with it. And the information is just there. Now you tell me how that works other than I was told that I was in Atlantis as well. <laughs> and then I had my own crystal skull. So that sort of makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. no, I also read too that Atlantis used to have crystal chairs that you would sit inside the chair and you would get information or comfort or something from that chair. Yeah, I mean, the first time it happened for me was a lady in us uh, in Western Australia that was bringing a crystal skull from mm -hmm. the UK, and she was told in her head on the way here mm -hmm. to take it to Mary Rodwell, and she didn't even know who I was. No idea, nothing. She just got the name. So she rang me up and she said, I've been told to bring this crystal skull to you. And I was saying, right, okay bring it then I got no idea why had not a clue why she would want to bring this and why she got this message no idea she puts it on the table she's with another lady and she's asking me questions and I just I'm getting the answers straight from this the skull literally it was like she'd ask the question the answer would be there and I don't know how I didn't touch it I didn't need to touch it it would just it was somehow just a frequency that I was tapping into and she did this for about nearly an hour and said, thank you very much. You've answered all my questions, picked up the skull and off she went. I never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So you tell me, how does that happen? I don't know, but it was just obviously innate in part of my abilities as you know, from Atlantis was available to me at that time. And it was in, for some reason important. And this is what I tell people, you know, you don't know what you've got inside you unless you start giving it voice. Yeah. Unless yeah. you start allowing it. a winding road, man. Yeah, exactly. You just don't know. Exactly. And it's all about tapping into that frequency that allows you to remember, to decode, like that day with the crystal skull, uh, trigger that connection for you, yeah. brought you back to Atlantis. So it's all about the frequency, the resonance that you mentioned earlier, Mary. Absolutely. Um, Victoria says, I place a crystal that has been, after placing a crystal that has been in the sun for all morning, then I saw a string of three numbers, four, three, six. What could that mean? What could that be? My answer to that is you must know on some level you've got to start going within and asking because it's for you and it's for you to decode, not anybody else. So I this is the nearest lottery and say, here, box these numbers. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. Oh, I love my co-host, everyone. <laughs> that's right. Straight and box it. I don't care. Oh, Mary, I think you're coming back to us. Can you meet? Can you hear us? You will in a moment. So let's hold a space. Yeah, I, I can see it here. Yes. Good, good, good. It's starting to flatten out now. She should be coming any minute. <laughs> here she comes. Yeah, she'll be back. I know she is there. Yep. did a, an interview today on Consciously Rising with Jeff on eTalk TV, and he compliments how much we're, you and I are so complimentary. All right, let's bring Mary back. She's here, everybody. Let's just bring her back. There you go. Welcome back, Mary. Thank you. What I was going to say was that it is within. It's part of the part of you, your higher consciousness that's giving it to you. So go into a quiet space and just ask the question, what does what do these numbers mean? And the first thing that comes in will probably be your answer. But you've got to learn to trust it. This is the big one, is actually learning to trust what you're getting. 
getting intuitively because everybody thinks everybody else is better than they are, knows more than them and all the rest. But you know yourself better than anybody else. And you know your truth better than anybody else. So this is now about empowerment. This is about you realizing that you are connected to that part of your awareness and trusting that connection. Oh, absolutely. It's really, it's really part of rediscovering your empowerment to believe in yourself, rediscovering the complexity of your, you, I call it your inner universe. And this is a huge part of the soul coaching I do, where I do my work as well. So I'm with you 100%. Now, there's something uh, Leah is mentioned about in a chat room I want to talk about, because something I heard, I heard about quite a bit, and I would love to hear your take on this so many people over some people many people feel that they have a true body being in stasis in a pod while their soul is in the human body here in this incarnation and do you have encounter anyone during your your regression work or your own research about a feeling of leaving another body behind and being in this human form while you are here doing your work and then coming back to this body that what might be in stasis somewhere. I haven't personally come across anyone that's stated that, but I would say this, if the understanding about the space arcs is real, and there are a number of researchers talking about these, um, if you like, all over the planet, that they have in them, in stasis, bodies. And it may be that when these arcs are activated, then maybe these bodies are made available to the soul that's in the human body at the moment and will transfer back into their other body. I don't know if that's the case, but I have been told there have been bodies seen in stasis in, in these space arcs that are all over the planet. One particularly around the Bermuda Triangle, another one in, um, I'm just trying to think of where it is, in in central, I uh, uh, don't know whether, um, Romania, there's um, one in Romania, there's apparently two in Ukraine, which is why there's been more going on there than you think. Russia has one, um, and I think there's some other, uh, I think there's one in Australia, uh, and these are huge spacecraft that have been there waiting for the right consciousness to show themselves. If it's correct, then this is what's come up. And the reason I gave it validity is because I did a regression with a lady that actually um, knew about the space arcs because she was told about it on the craft and that these were going to be activated at a certain level of human consciousness and they were going to show themselves and there are beings in pods in some of these arcs apparently whether they're what she's talking about i would say go into get someone to help you go into that awareness a bit more and see if you can bring more detail and more understanding of what what is what that is and whether it's related to this i don't know a good point. I love that you bring this perspective and there's other aspect of those body stasis may not be necessarily the case for this person, but that there might be a connection or not to really go within and discover more about this. Um, I love this. Thank you so much, Mary. I know there's also a lot of thoughts about giants. Giants are supposed to wake up and come back um, to the surface or to, inter to interact with humanity or to Mm. contribute to the upliftment have you encountered any information uh, or experiences in regards to those giants not in any particular uh, my, my sort of uh, my research from individuals but i've read a great deal about the fact that we have various civilizations um in the planet you know in the uh, deeper in our planet and they've been waiting for a, a shift in consciousness before they make themselves known. And the giants, of course, are that. The fact that the giants have been hidden as part of our history right across the planet where they have been, you know, destroyed, the bones have been destroyed and what have you. And yet they're very much part of, I think, without doubt, 
the um, creation of Homo sapiens sapiens. Uh, um, and uh, that's part of what is, as far as I'm concerned, really obvious that we've had, um, you know, these uh, non-human intelligences. Some of them have been on the planet, have interbred with us, but also interfered or added to our DNA, giving us the star lineage that we have. And apparently there's anything from 12 different species to more, perhaps, of that. And that's when, our, as we our dormant DNA gets activated, we start to activate some of those, the DNA from our star heritage, such as Arcturian or Pleiadian or Orion. And then somebody says, oh, I, I feel I'm from the Pleiades, that part of them has been activated. But I believe we have all of that in our DNA and with specific skills, specific awareness um, and, uh, uh, and specific um, abilities. That come from those 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 links we have to our star origins. Absolutely, and I know there's, there's a lot of sometimes concerns and energies that people get. You know, fluctuates in their energies, whether it's worry, fear, energies. I would like to bring some maybe uplifting messages from all the all the cases you work with, all the beautiful people you work with to regression research what you've learned from them what can you share about some messages that you hear maybe a lot about the whole process of humanity is going through right now i think it's very important given the chaos that's going on that it's very easy to get drawn into the fear All right, let's hold the light, everyone. Mary will be right back with incredible wisdom. First of all is this. What I, uh, oh, here we go. One of the things that I say to people that gives me the ultimate hope for mankind more than anything else is I'm seeing multitudes of new generations of human coming in with all these amazing abilities. And I have said uh, many times, I don't believe they've come in for a waste of time. They've come in because they know we are now preparing to be part of a new era of humanity, a new era of human consciousness and higher consciousness. And I believe that really the important thing to remember is, is exactly that, that they've come in because they know they can make a difference, otherwise they wouldn't bother. And the other part of the message is this, that they have said, that they can deal with whatever is happening on this planet now, that they all have these abilities to help with the uh, ecology, to help with pollution, to um, work with the elements. Yes, working with the elements for sure. Let's hold the space. And let's keep our frequency high together. To work with any. Yeah, let's hold the space. I know Mary will be right back, everyone. Energy field. Why? Mary is refreshing. Right now, I don't think the platform Marie really matters, whether it's Zoom, whether it's StreamYard, whether it's wherever we are, it's the energy overall. So let's hold the space. Oh, Mary's come back. Allow me to bring her back. Welcome back, Mary. You're talking about working with the elementals. Yeah. What I, I'm, I'm seeing with all those awakening right now, and there's, I'm just seeing a pin, you know, the tip of the iceberg if this is being reflected across the planet, it is telling us something really profound, that there are people everywhere waking up to more of their multidimensional nature and their star origins. That is not a mistake. That is happening because they know that we're going into something far greater, far more beautiful than we've ever known. And one of the things I'd like to say before we lose it again, <laughs> 
is one the gentleman um, command sergeant robert dean was a, a ufologist that um for many years i followed he's now passed on he talked about being up on the spacecraft for a number of weeks and he said he was told about the 12 origins of homo sapiens but he said this i was shown our future and it's glorious so i'll leave it there glorious oh you were shown the future and glorious and that ties up with a personal experience what i had with a human being 400 years in the future timeline of the earth and i got something very very similar very similar the dna is shifting we're, re we're returning to embracing even our multi-dimensional dna now the codons of light are awakening the telomere also is shifting are shifting and let's let's extend a little little bit tiny more i love what you said you talk and it says the future is glorious and it starts right here right now because that future exists already right yes it does and it's all we are aligning ourselves and i know there's many of you in the chat room right now or are sharing about your experience uh there's one person in particular saying oh i wake up in the Come middle of the night, I see myself with long arms or skin, blue skin colors, and my body shifting. What what is going on to me? So is it possible that we are accessing more and more profound memories of other soul aspect of who we are? Is that possible, Mary? I think it's very much. Let's hold the space. Mary will be right back. That we wish to be in our. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where we were that with that. You wish to. I I believe that once we are fully activated, we can choose the form that we wish to operate from our star heritage. I think that will be a, a possibility that we will present the form that we feel most comfortable with. So we will get then the true nature of all those star seeds that have come in from all over the, the, the planetary systems, the cosmos um, and the other dimensions. Because when people, you know, one of the things an eight year old said to a mum, you know, mum, we are the aliens. And I thought, yeah, they say, you know, when are they going to help us? And when are they going to support us? I said, they're already doing it. They've incarnated in human form to be boots on the ground, to help us be all we could be. And this is what we're surrounded by is many star beings just in human form so that they can integrate and help us to be ready for this shift. Yes, ready for this shift, exactly. And there's so many, many beautiful star beings, advanced beings, being of the light who have returned right now in these forms. And I love what you said, that brings a whole different dimension. When you said it come at a time where our physical body is shifting in a way that we can also, with the consciousness, where we can choose the form we want to operate from. It is also closely more closely aligned or representative to what star seed or place we represent as uh, star groups, planetary system, energy. I love that. I can I can see myself going, yes, finally I can go back to my 10 feet tall Arctur and South. I don't have any air. I'm tall and lanky. My eyes are bigger. Here's my beautiful luminous skin and I can talk with you in the meditation together. That would be amazing. <laughs> I would love that. Absolutely extraordinary. Mary, I know I speak for uh, both of us here at the Infinite Star Connections. Both Jeff and I are profoundly grateful for you. In spite of all the interference, we have been victorious. And that shows us that the light always prevails. And like you said, you've been shown what the true future is about. And it is glorious. And I think that says it all. I mean, the energy. Don't you feel, Jeff? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is great stuff here. You know, 
and it's happening right before our eyes, which is a wonderful thing. Yes, it's unfolding right before our eyes. And it's just to remind everyone, tonight episode uh, with Mary Rodwell, the one and only, we're also on part of eTalk TV radio marathon. So for those of you who are listening on the marathon, we're very grateful. And uh, Jeff, the owner of ET Talk TV, asked me to make this comment. So I promise and I hold my promises. Make sure you stay tuned at the top of the hour, everyone. Midnight Blend at 8 p.m. Pacific is coming with Dave Cruz, Beyond the Strain, JJ from Shift Happens. And so there we go. Stay tuned for those who are part of the eTalk Marathon. For those of you who are following us at the Infinite Star Connections, today we want to send all of our love and gratitude to the amazing Mary all the way from Australia. Mary, thank you for being with us. I know we could go for easily two, three hours just to dive into the diversity of wisdom and, and you know, the children, all the generational, the complexity of the ascension process, all of it. I'm very grateful for you to be so patient and staying in your light to, today with us. Everyone will be right back in November. With We have another lineup of amazing guests. We have Dr. Dan Seda. That we're going to bring on the Infinite Star Connections. We have David Wallace, who I met at the Mount Shasta Conference. He has an amazing, incredible, real-life experience with this extraterrestrial civilization. Go on board the ship. He went to hit their planet. They saw the way they lived, their culture, their technology. He's going to talk about all of this and much more. Mary, we love you. Oh, I love you both, too. Thank you so much for inviting me. And we'll see you next year with these conferences, too. Yes. Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. And if we're in Australia, we'll let you know. If you're in America, please let us know. <laughs> I will. Thank you, both. It's been wonderful. Take care. Uh, take good care. Much love, everyone. We'll see you in November. Stay in your light. No fear, everyone. Just light. Much love.